Welcome to another Sailzing.com rules discussion. Today we'll be explaining the changes to the racing rules of sailing that took effect in 2021. This video is an update to an earlier version that we developed in November of 2020. The update includes a few more changes that impact sailors. Many of the 2021 changes are minor and have little impact on sailors during a race. For this discussion, we've skipped the mind-numbing detail and we'll focus on the changes that affect sailors. We'll show the marked up change and explain why it was made and discuss any potential impact on your sailing. If you want to dig into all the detailed changes, go to the World Sailing website for the study version of the rules changes. There's a link to that document in the description. The new rules took effect on January 1st, 2021. Here's a quick summary of the changes that could impact sailors. We'll explain more about these as we go through the rest of the discussion. The definitions of start and finish were changed to use the boat's hull to judge whether a boat is over the line. The terms crew and equipment were eliminated from the definition. A definition of sailing the course was added. The hidden impact of this change is that it allows the race committee to score a boat as NSC did not sail the course without protesting that boat. The rules concerning exoneration were clarified and consolidated into one new rule, Rule 43. A solid blue flag denotes one end of the finish line, while the familiar orange flag denotes one end of the starting line. A V flag will be displayed when the race committee wants to instruct sailors and support persons regarding search and rescue. If you seek redress for the actions of another boat, it can't be granted unless the other boat has taken a penalty or has been penalized for violations of Rule 2, Fair Sailing, or Rule 69, Misconduct. This means you will likely have to protest that boat. Continuing with our quick summary, the notice of race, the NOR, becomes more important for two reasons. First, the NOR may contain more information about the rules for the event. Also, the NOR information does not need to be repeated in the sailing instructions. This means you will want to read the NOR as carefully as you read the sailing instructions. The race committee or protest committee can use the notice board to announce their protest of a boat. This means you will want to make sure you check the notice board after racing, or if the board is electronic, make sure you have access to it. Finally, support persons, and that includes coaches and parents, have new obligations and accountability. Support persons are now required to give aid to any boat needing assistance. Support persons are now prohibited from disposing trash on water, that's Rule 47, and a competitor can seek redress for the actions of another boat's support persons. In the rest of this video, we'll go over the changes in more detail. Here is the new definition of start. Additions are shown in red and deletions are shown with a strike outline. Take a few moments to read the definition. As you can see, the definition previously included the boat's crew and equipment when determining if a boat is over the line. These have been removed and only the ball's hull counts. This change was made because the race committee has struggled in some events to determine which boats are over if only a bowsprit or some other protruding equipment is over. This makes it easier for the race committee. The term hull is not defined in the rule. If there are challenges to the meaning of hull, they will probably be resolved by referring to another document, the Equipment Rules of Sailing. You can find a link to that document in the description. This change is also reflected in the definition of finish and in Rules 29 and 30 regarding recalls and starting penalties. This change probably has little impact for most one design sailors. The bow sprit and spinnaker protrude beyond the bow of a boat, but these are not normally in place when sailing upwind. The rules adopt a new definition, sail the course. Take a minute to read the definition. Do you recognize where this wording came from? The wording was taken from Rule 28, which was previously titled sailing the course. 
The definition now is used in Rule 28. This language was commonly referred to as the string rule. It states that you must go around all the marks and through the gates in the proper direction so that a string following you encloses the course. If you make an error, for instance in rounding outside a gate mark, you have to back up and go through the gate in the right direction. This change was made to provide a consistent meaning for all the places in the rules that mention sailing the course. This change is also a potential trap for sailors. With the change, the rules also added a scoring abbreviation NSC for not sailing the course. Now the race committee can simply score a boat NSC if she doesn't sail the course properly. Previously, they would have needed to protest the boat for breaking a rule and hold a hearing. If the race committee adheres to this thought process, the only way a sailor may find out that he or she has been scored NSC is to read the scores when they are posted. If you have been scored NSC in error, you can request redress. However, given the time limits on requesting redress, sailors will want to review the results as soon as they are posted. In Part 1, The Fundamental Rules, there are two changes that could have an on-water effect. Both changes are straightforward. Rule 1.1 was modified to clarify that support persons are required to help a person or vessel in danger. Note that support persons include coaches and parents or guardians of competitors, so parents of youth sailors are obligated to help any sailor or boat in trouble. Take a moment to review the most important rule in the racing rules, Rule 2. As you can see, this rule was modified to state that a penalty for a breach of fair sailing can now only be a disqualification that is not excludable as a throwout. The scoring abbreviation is DNE. This was done to limit the discretion of the race officials in assessing penalties for the rule. Now we come to part two of the rules, when boats meet. There are several changes in this part. We'll take them one at a time. Rule 14, avoiding contact, was modified as shown. Take a moment to note the changes. The intent of Rule 14 is to require all boats to avoid contact, including right-of-way boats and those entitled to mark room. However, the rule protects right-of-way boats and boats entitled to mark room by stating that they only need to avoid contact when it's clear the other boat is not cooperating. The first change in this rule is to clarify that in mark room situations, you are only protected by this rule if you are sailing within the mark room allowed. For example, in the situation shown, blue is taking more mark room than needed and can be penalized for not avoiding contact if yellow heads up. The second change is that the exoneration portion of the rule was moved to the new exoneration rule, Rule 43, which we'll discuss shortly. Rule 16 regarding changing course has a minor change with little impact for most sailors. Take a moment to read the changes. Note that Rule 16.1 is not changed and is the fundamental rule here. Right-of-way boats can't change course if the other boat does not have room to keep clear. The wording in 16.2 was revised to specifically address bearing off past 90 degrees to the true wind to hunt a boat on a beat to windward. This is a common tactic in team racing. The rule now applies when the port deck boat is sailing to pass to leeward of the starboard boat. Thus, the starboard boat can no longer turn this rule off by bearing off below 90 degrees to the true wind. Rule 18.1, concerning when mark room applies, was changed to remove a loophole in Rule 18. The change was to add a sentence stating that Rule 18 no longer applies when mark room has been given. A similar sentence was removed from Rule 18.2 Delta. 
Let's pull this apart with a situation from the study version. In the situation shown, the gray boat was not overlapped with the white boat at the zone, and so was not entitled to room at the mark in accordance with Rule 18.2 Bravo. However, in the previous version of the rules, Rule 18.2 Bravo turns off after the white boat has been given room. In the previous version of the rules, once Rule 18.2 Bravo turned off, Rule 18.2 Alpha would still apply and would grant mark room to the inside overlapped boat. So, at position 4, Rule 18.2 Alpha would have granted mark room to Gray. This was not the intent envisioned by the rules. To fix this, World Sailing added text to 18.1 to turn off the entire rule once the boat entitled to mark room passes the mark. This rule gets changed frequently, and I'm sure we'll continue to see changes. A new rule, Rule 20.4, was added to Rule 20, Room to Tack at an Obstruction. Take a moment to read the rule. As you can see, this rule puts the onus on the hailing boat to ensure the hail is received. This helps prevent confusion when it may be hard to hear, such as in a noisy environment or in larger boats where the boats may be further apart. In the International Code Flag System, Code Flag V, Victor, signifies a request for assistance. World Sailing added this flag to the Race Signals page and added Rule 37 to require all boats to monitor the Race Committee channel for search and rescue instructions. The Race Committee will also hail boats to turn to this channel. Rule 43 is a new rule which consolidates the rules related to exoneration. Take a look at the rule. Do you remember the three rules that these statements were drawn from? Part A of the new rule comes from Rule 64.1 Alpha. The wording is comprehensive. If you are compelled to break a rule because another boat broke a rule, you are exonerated. The remaining two parts add further guidance. Part B comes from Rule 21, which is the old rule regarding exoneration. Rule 21 has been deleted. This part is specific to situations in which room or mark room are required. This part exonerates you from the right-of-way rules rules about keeping clear, and touching a mark. Part C comes from Rule 14B and protects right-of-way boats or boats entitled to room if contact occurs, but only if the contact does not cause damage or injury. Be sure to note that if any damage or injury occurs, no matter how slight, the right-of-way boat will be penalized if it is shown that it was possible to have avoided contact. Rule 43 also changes the wording from shall be exonerated to is exonerated. This makes it clear that exonerated boats do not need to wait for our hearing and do not need to take penalties on the water. Appendix J regarding the notice of race and sailing instructions is also changed. We'll summarize the changes here rather than show the markups. The change removes all requirements that a rule included in the Notice of Race, the NOR, be repeated in the sailing instructions. The change also requires the NOR to contain rules a reasonable competitor would want to know when deciding whether to enter an event or when preparing for the event in the weeks before it. This significantly increases the importance of the NOR, and you should be sure to read it as carefully as you read the sailing instructions. Rule 25.1 also requires that the NOR be made available to each boat before she enters an event. Finally, two flags were added to the race signals page in addition to the V flag we discussed previously. These flags had been in use but not recognized in the racing rules of sailing. The orange flag is the starting line flag we are all familiar with. The blue flag is now designated as the finish line flag. 
it's not certain that all race committees will adopt the blue flag as the finishing line flag. The SIs will state which flags will be used. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Also, visit our website at salesing.com for much more content and some unique sailing products.